I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Is he good this morning? Is he good this morning? Is he good this morning? I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. You've got to will yourself to bless the Lord this morning. Anybody had a rough week this morning? Anybody had a rough week? I dare you to bless the Lord then. thankful for God's goodness and his mercy. His mercy endureth forever. Aren't you glad that his mercy endureth forever? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to our social media platform. Good morning. Good morning. Beyond the Veil in-house. Beyond the Bell Outhouse. <laughs> I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you would press the share button, the like button, but tag somebody in this broadcast, we want to all eat together. We want to eat together as a family this morning. Amen? Amen. Praise team sounding good today. Thank God for the praise team. Amen. Last week we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And let's go this morning to the second, second Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Second Corinthians five, verse 14. When you have it, say amen. amen. And I'll be reading to verse, all the way to verse 19. And the word of the Lord in the Amplified Bible reads, verse 14, for the love of Christ controls and compels us because we have concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. <laughs> And he died for all so, that all, so that all those who live would no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for their sake. So from now on, we regard no one from a human point of view, according to worldly standards and values. Though we have known Christ from a human point of view, now we no longer know him in this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he's a new creature, creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, New things have come <clears throat> because spiritual awakening brings a new life. But all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable to him, and gave us the mi ministry of reconciliation, <coughs> excuse me, so that by our example, we might bring others to him. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, 
but canceling them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation that is restoring the favor with God. <laughs> Amen. Can you just turn to your neighbor, as Minister Kim would say, and say, God is restoring my favor. <laughs> Tell somebody else, God is restoring favor. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, your word is already blessed. We pray that you would bless the vessel that is delivering your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> amen. We have talked about, and we talked about in Bible study, that after the resurrection, most people, after Easter, most people go back to their old way of life, may not come back to the house of the Lord again, maybe till Christmas, maybe. <laughs> Can I just say that? Yeah, I, I said that. But not, not much like the disciples. We looked at Luke, the 23rd chapter, I would believe, 23rd and 24th chapter in Bible study. Wow. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there were, disciples, two disciples in particular, headed back to their old life on the road to Emmaus. So we're not saying that, that we are any different, but here is the next Sunday after the resurrection. Are we still in that place where we understand the power of the resurrection? When I looked at this, the scripture, it says basically that we got to know Christ in a different way. This resurrection makes us more like him than we ever knew. As a matter of fact, when we skip to the last verse, it says it was about restoring the favor of man to God. <laughs> and so we haul a favor all the time, but... This restoration of favor came from the power of the resurrection. God's favor is God giving us the ability to do something which is humanly impossible for us to do. <laughs> That's the favor. What it is, is that God gives us something to do that he knows is humanly impossible, but we must partner with him and when we partner with him, uh, it manifests in the earth realm. Someone shout favor. It's not necessarily that you're going to get a new house or a new car. All those things come along with it. But it is now that God has given you an assignment and inside you, you are not able to do it in and of yourself. And at that point, uh, he comes behind you uh, and says, where there were two or three gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing, uh, he becomes the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, uh, partnering with your earthly person. And now you are manifesting or walking in that thing which God commanded you to do. Someone shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that's why people get discouraged that people were on the road to Emmaus going back to their old lifestyle because they didn't understand that God didn't tell you to do it. He wants you to partner with him so he can restore favor to your life. And when he restores favor to your life, there is nothing humanly impossible for you to do. Someone shout, I've got favor. Hmm. I, I, I submit to you that sometimes, how, not sometimes, but how many of you are getting tired of trying to extrapolate the same uh, 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 scriptures uh, Sunday after Sunday? And how many times uh, is, is, is the woman at the well going to be preached? <laughs> how many times are we going to, and how many ways are we going to exegete Daniel in the lion's den? <laughs> how many times can we look at the three Hebrew boys uh, and tell it so many different ways? I'm 
telling you that when the resurrection happened, it was a time for us to move from the traditional stories to move to the spiritual things of Christ Jesus. I know you're not get, it, it, it's going to get thin in here, but blind Bartimaeus was blind Bartimaeus. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been preaching 22 years. If I keep preaching on blind Bartimaeus, you're going to get stuck on blind Bartimaeus. But if I preach on the favor of God to change your life and your situation into a new pl- hey. So Paul here is writing to the Corinthian church because they know about all of these, these, these rituals and the traditions, but he's trying to get them to move in a place where he said, I can't know you out of who you are before. He said, I can't know you out of your humanness anymore. I, 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 work with me. We're going to go somewhere. I can't know you the way that I knew you before. Yeah, I see you scratching your head. Because of the resurrection, I got to know you by the Spirit. Because yeah. yeah. yes. yes. he said, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. Guess what? Old things are passed away. That means our old relationship is gone. I knew you in the natural, but now I got to know you by the Spirit. See, about four people are going to get that. Huh? That's why I, 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 that moves me from judging what you do to, to looking at you and praying for you in the spirit. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what the scripture says. That's the scripture says, for uh, the love of Christ controls and compels us now of the resurrection because we have concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. You're looking at someone who died. What do you mean I'm looking at someone who died? Yes, you are. You're looking at a dead man walking. (laughs) He said, because if one died, Jesus died, that means we were in him. All of us died. That's what the resurrection was about. All of us dying. That old lifestyle died. The old that you know me has died. The old stories about those biblical characters are good, but all of that is dead that I may know Jesus Christ and him crucified. Oh, they're looking at me crazy. They're looking at me crazy. First John 4 says, as he is, so are we. Where? In this world. So if he has died and he's resurrected, guess what? You die. And you were been resurrected. As he is, so are we now in this. See, I'm going to put this out there, put these nuggets out there, and you're going to get a hold of this down the road. When you get a little bit tired of hearing the same biblical stories over and over, you're going to see this thing in the spirit. You're going, to, you're going to know me by the Spirit. I'm going to know you by your gift. I'm going to know you by who God said you are. I'm going to know you not by your actions, because guess what? You're still working on your actions. Can, can I get a high five in the Spirit? I'm still working on my actions, but I got to know you in the Spirit. When we talk about someone having favor, we mean that they are approved. They are liked and thought well of. They are positioned to receive preferential treatment and promotion. (laughs) See, we can only do this if I know you by the spirit because your actions may not give you favor. I'm thankful this morning because I have favor. We're in the year 5782, remember? It starts the sabbatical year. In the book of Exodus, it's the year where they are released from the past. (laughs) A a, a year to let go. Good God Almighty. I I, I only want three, three people to get that. Favor means that this year you let everything go, and you don't have to really work for it. All you got to do is maintain what God has given to you. 
don't, don't look at me in that tone of voice. Because there comes a time when you have worked, 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 and then God says, you relax right here. I want you just to maintain the blessing that I've given you. When you maintain a car, you take it in and let them check it over so that whatever they find, they can fix it. You don't fix it. They fix it. Come on. You, that, that you already have the blessing. You already have the car. You just maintaining it. You take it in and get the oil changed. You take it in and get the tires checked. Come on, some mechanics. You take it in and ask them to check. God said, that's the season you're in now. I'm performing maintenance on your favor. He's performing maintenance. That's why you pe- get tweaked a little bit and the things look like that. He, he's tightening up that area of faith in you uh, so that what he's doing now has got to be manifest. Mm. <laughs> Don't you just love him? He, he maintains what he starts. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he comes by and, and he, he pokes you a little bit. To, I need to check your oil. Hallelujah. <laughs> I need somebody say he's checking my oil. Where are my oily saints in the house? He needs to check your oil to see what's in it. Is there viscosity in your oil? Or is your oil dirty? He said, I'm checking your oil this morning. Where is your praise? Is it an old praise? Or is it a praise that'll move a mountain? He says, I'm checking your favor this morning. Are you still declaring and decreeing what I said? Because remember, you got to declare it, and he's got to touch and agree with it, and now your favor is manifested in the earth realm. He said, I need to maintain your favor. He says, what was previously planted has now come into my, my, my presence as something I need to maintain. It is not the devil. It is not your enemies and it's not your brothers or your sister. I'm performing a maintenance check. Is your heart still in the right place? Is your praise coming from a place of earthly praise or have you gone to a level where you have worshipped God to the point that when his presence stops on you, uh, that you can say nothing? You haven't worshipped till you get to the place uh, where you can't even say a word. I need one person that understands that place uh, where you go so deep with God that there is, you're afraid to speak and you can't hear anything. You're in awe of his presence. If you're not there, you are not walking in favor. Favor is a biblical concept. We are created for favor. Can you tell somebody, I'm created for favor? From the very beginning, I've been created for favor. That's why he says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I got to take you back to the beginning of what you were created for. Who am I talking to this morning? He said, I had to cause everything in you that was not of me to die out. In verse 15, it said, he died for all so that all no longer live themselves. That's the oil check right there. But for him who died and was raised for their sake. Here's the oil check. Are you living for yourself or are you living for Christ? What you do, do you do it for your own vain glory or do you do it for the love of God? Uh Do you do it so that other people can tell you how great you are or do you do it because you just love the Lord? Come on, this is an oil check this morning. Why are you doing what you're doing? Do you pray and shout so that other people can see you? Are you just so caught up in God that you don't care who looking at you? Everybody doesn't know that because everybody can't go there. But he said, I'm doing an oil check this morning. Tell your neighbor, it's oil check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to die to wanting people to admire you. Good God. 
Can I, can I say that you got to die to wanting people to honor you and respect you? I heard the Lord say sometimes you're going after the respect of the wrong people. Sometimes you want to be noticed by the ones you say have big names. And he said, I don't even know them. And you are doing things to get the eye of them. He said, have you died to that? This side say to that, have you died to that? If they never call your name, are you still going to worship him? Have you died to that? If they never call you up to the next level, are you dead to that? Are you dead to that? Do you care if Sister Sally gets a promotion and you don't? Are you dead to that? Somebody say oil check. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, I don't want to say Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you trying to kiss up to the next person you think going to be pastor? Or do you just love the Lord? I'll sit that right there. Because there's an oil check going on because you can't go to the next level until the oil has been checked. You got a 10,000 mile checkup right here and God says I need to check the viscosity of your oil because your oil is what's going to make the engine run wild. And if it's not, 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 has no viscosity in it, your engine will lock up. I got to get you before you lock up. I got to get you before you shut down. I got to get you before you throw a rod. I got to get you before you're no good to anybody else. God says, I'm checking up your oil this morning. Somebody's oil light has come on. Somebody's light has come on to say, you know, God, I, and you're talking to me this morning. I don't care about anybody else. It's me, it's me, it's me. Is your oil light on? Come, come on. Is it on? Is it on? Is it on? Are you just running on fumes this morning? Don't you throw a rod. Throwing a rod will mess up your engine. It'll mess up your future. It'll mess up your next. Don't you get stuck. Aren't you glad that he loves you enough to perform an oil check? Yeah, yeah, because we got to keep things running because this is the spiritual aspect of it. If I'm good, I'm no good if, if I'm the only one that's good. You good, Ernest? You good? Are you good? See, we all got to be good because if I got three tires running and one of them is flat, I can't afford to say that ain't my problem. That's why I got to say you good, Vic. You good, Sharon? You good, Frida? You good? Because if not, we're going to pull over. We got to stop and get this thing all together. Because I got to make sure you're good. Ask your neighbor, you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask somebody else, you good? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't tell me you good if you're not good. Because we're hobbling along, and i got to make sure we're all on the same page. Reminded of a story. You see, when you, when you see birds flying south for the winter, I, I, I love the story. God, when I was new in ministry, God, God he brought this story to my remembrance. He says, when you see seagulls or gulls flying south for the winter, what do they do? They get in this formation called a V formation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> a V formation, because who's ever in the head, the beginning, knows where they're going. That, that one bird in the very beginning knows where they're going, so all of them line up with that bird that's in the beginning. But why do they use a V formation? Good God Almighty. I'm going back to the text, but the reason why they do it is because the first bird gets the velocity going. <laughs> 
The first bird gets the velocity going. And so when they look at him and know that he looks like he knows where he's going, then a bird on the right will get up under that right wing because he ain't got to work as hard as the person in the front. All he got to do is get up under and hook up to the anointing on the person. And on the left side, that, that bird looks too and gets up under the left wing of the bird in the beginning. And that makes it easier for the leader and the two birds because they're all flowing under the same anointing. <laughs> And after they look at it, we see other birds who start to get up and they get in formation. They get up under the wing of the previous bird. Uh, and that's why you got a V because now they're all flowing and going in the same direction. Ask your neighbor, you good? good. Ask another neighbor, you good? Because we're going somewhere. And as they begin to fly... <laughs> What I noticed is that if one of them gets sick, what he does is that he falls out of line and falls to the ground. The other one comes up and takes his position, but the one in the back falls out of line with him. He comes and sits with him until he can get himself together. Ask your neighbor, you good? Because we all got to go together. If it means I got to fall out of line and come over and see about you, I want to make sure you're good because I can't get there without you. Tell your neighbor, I can't get there without you. That's why I got to make sure that your oil is good because your oil is what's going to keep me connected to the vision. Uh -huh, that's why I keep calling you and saying, you okay? I do that because I need you to be connected to the vision of this house. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I need you to be connected to the vision of this house. Yeah, you got to die to yourself in order to get up under the anointing. You can't have your own vision going in your own direction. We're going south and you're going east. See, that, that, that's where the oil starts to get, get, get seeded because you're going in a different direction. So don't get angry and upset if God's got to tweak your life a little bit because he want to make sure that you get there with him. Who am I talking with? Yeah, how many of you have had to step down and get with somebody and say, you all right, girl? You all right, bro? You all right? I noticed that you, love, you, you couldn't keep up a little bit. You okay? I'm just going to sit here with you. We're going to get it right together. See, we saw, oh, oh, you ain't got it, I'm going on by myself. He said, you done died to that. Right. Tell somebody I'm dead to that. Yeah. You don't see them at church? Call them. You don't see them online? Call them. You don't want, you want to be the one that gets out of line, gets back with them in line, because the Bible, the Bible says that, that after you have been converted, <laughs> Convert your bride. Uh, after you have been converted, then we're going to go and do this thing together. But he said, that's aspects of favor that I'm restoring to the body. Mm. <laughs> can, can, can I help you with that? You're not, there's no long ranges in this thing. Yeah, Christ died for all. And he said, he died for all, we died too. <laughs> if I got it, you got it. If I'm struggling, you should be struggling. If I'm troubled, you should be troubled too. If you see me doing some crazy stuff, you should be able to just stand there and say, whenever she get through. Favor will transform your life and the life of those connected to you. 
we have the revelation of the favor of God on our lives. It heals our hearts, brings us into a place of rest from striving. It releases us from working for approval. <laughs> yeah, because many of us, if truth be told, we wouldn't do it if we didn't think somebody was going to take notice of it. Can, do I need to go home now? He said, favor will release you from that. Favor says, I don't care who's looking. I love the Lord. I'm doing this because I love the Lord. You don't have to put my name anywhere. You don't have to put my face anywhere. Really, I love the Lord. And I want to tell you why I love him. Because I was sinking deep in sin. Y'all wasn't sinking in sin. Because y'all be all over the place now. You were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. And you were very deeply staying within. You were going down to rise no more. But the master. But the master. But the master of the sea. Not the master of my trouble, but the master of the sea. He heard my despairing cry, and from the water, he lifted me. Now, safe am I. It was love. It was God's love that lifted me. It was God's love that lifted me when nothing else would help. When nothing else could get me out of it, it was God's love. Oh, I heard you, Lord. He says, I'm, if you turn it over to me, I'm going to get you to the place that you need to be. Because many of you don't have the strength to move on in and of yourself. This favor releases us from fear. Because we know that his intent toward us is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Isn't that good right now? I'm released from fear because I know that God loves me. And his intentions for me are good. He wants me to succeed. He wants me to be successful. He wants me to be a partaker of the kingdom. As long as I know that he wants that, everything else is good. Favor brings promotion. See, we like that. We hear about that. Remember, Moses, he had favor. Noah found favor. Moses found favor. Noah found favor. Mary found favor. To find means to locate. Don't mess with me this morning. The scripture said it was found. Yeah, Noah found it. How did Noah find favor? He became open to the will of God and messed around and stumbled and located favor. Can I say about three people in here, you get ready to stumble and locate favor. <sighs> I see two people, I see two people that I clearly see that God says that you stumble into this place because of your obedience and you have found favor. <laughs> you weren't looking for favor. You just obeyed God and found. <laughs> you didn't want to do anything but the will of God and messed around and found favor. <laughs> Let, let, let me say this. There is a plan that God has for your life, and when he spoke it to you, it scared you, but all he needed for you to do was be obedient. Who, who am I speaking? Yeah. And it seemed like it was too big. It seemed like you didn't have the money for it. It seemed like you had messed your reputation up so bad that nobody was going to believe you. But you messed around and started obeying him and found favor. 
God told Noah, build an ark. Crazy, right? Crazy. How many crazy things God told you to do? Step out. What did he do? He got him a hammer, and he got him a nail. And he started hammering, and he started building. He knew that this was something too big for him, but because he started the process, it was God himself that collided with the call on Noah's life to bring about something as massive as an ark. But it was not about the ark. It was about the salvation of souls. Yeah, yeah. yeah see, if you get concerned with what we asked you to do or the, 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 the ark, you're missing it. I can't do that because it's going to It's not about you. It's about all that's connected to you that's waiting for you to put that hammer on the nail. Favor doesn't happen till you put the hammer on the nail. Favor doesn't happen till you sign the contract. Favor doesn't happen till you call the meeting. Favor doesn't happen till you fill out the application. Favor doesn't happen till you go to the bank. Favor doesn't happen till you start the prayer group. Favor doesn't happen till you start it. Am I helping anybody? Wow. It, it, it releases us into demonstration. God said, tell them, daughter, that this favor is going to release them into demonstration. <laughs> We're good at reciting Bible verses and Bible stories, but you're actually demonstration. Mm -hmm. Damn. I can say all day long that the scripture says, I shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But until I take these hands and until I go to somebody that's sick and put my hands on them, there is no demonstration. <laughs> Y'all are so scared because you think that you're going to look ridiculous. You look ridiculous with all that power on you and you doing nothing with it. I dare you to step out and put the nail in the hammer. Yeah, you want to see how you can get released from fear? Step out. Step out anyway. No matter who says what, no matter what they do, no matter what you've done, step out. Can I get somebody to step out? I dare you to step out. Right here, right now, just step out. See, that's what it is. Everybody waiting for the next person. Ain't nobody stepped out. That's why I'm going to see who's going to go. I'm going to see who's going to go. Ain't nobody stepped out. And God said, that's why you don't have favor. I need somebody to step up here. on your life. I release favor over your life. I release favor in your life because you step out. Every dream and vision that God has given you, I declare it as the apostle of this house that it is released over your life. I declare it. I decree it. You shall walk in demonstration. The business shall come forward. Your family shall be saved. You shall get a job. Your family is coming back to the house of God. Your finances are about to turn around because of the demonstration. Shall yes. You go back to your seat.
what God is doing, but he said, this is your hour of favor. You want to know why you came up? Because God was calling you to this hour of favor. He needed you to be the door for the next generation. Y'all scared to step out? According to Psalms 512, surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with favor as a shield. He said, I'm protecting you now. Someone shout protection. Yeah. Because of the resurrection, favor has been released, and you now have protection. Amen. Amen. No longer shall you look for it from man. <laughs> he said a thousand will fall at your side. Ten thousand left your right hand. But guess what? It's not coming nigh. You're dwelling. It may get this close, but it can't touch you. It may try to touch everything around you. But you got favor. It won't touch you. Yeah. And it won't mess with your future. Because God has already said that you are supernatural. And I have wiped away all of your natural thinking. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. He said in verse 17, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And then he goes down to say, but these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable to him. Yeah. Tell somebody, God loves me. God loves <laughs> I'm, acceptable to him. I'm acceptable to him. I don't care what you say, I'm acceptable yeah. to him. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to even go there. And gave us the ministry of reconciliation so that by our example, we may bring others to him. Yeah. By our example. You ain't even got to say nothing. They're looking at you. Yeah. They know you. You may not know them, but they know you because they're waiting to see the next move you're going to make. Win them to Christ by obeying God. Since they got to look, give them something to look at. Let them look at your obedience. Let them be confounded by the favor on your life. They're thinking that you'll never, ever, ever move past where they are. But let them know it's not about you. It's about my love for Christ. Listen, the last verse in, and this is what I like, and we're going home. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them. Ah. See, we got people in here that don't sin. They don't understand this. They don't understand this. But for those of you who are online and those of you who understand that God was in, Jesus was in Christ and Christ was in, they were in each other and I'm in Christ Jesus. Because if any man be in Christ, they, that's the scripture started out with, it. we're in Christ. So if I'm in Christ Jesus, he was reconciling me back to himself and forgiving me for my sins. <laughs> Good God Almighty, he's canceling them according to scripture. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if you have never been in a city for a sister, for a brother, but he was canceling that, that's all goes with favor. You ain't got favor till he cancels your sin. <laughs> he says, I got to cancel your sin because I got to restore you to favor. If you didn't shout on that, I don't know what you can shout on. Because when you find out your sins have been canceled, don't you walk a little bolder? Don't you walk a little bit more upright? When you're, well, let's put it in the natural. When your bills are paid up, you ain't afraid to answer the phone, are you? Before, you didn't see that, you didn't know the number you were answering. But you know you owe somebody. You, you're just not trying to answer the phone, are you? Come on, come on, and you're walking around and trying to see whose number it is. He said, but I 
canceled your sin. You can answer the phone now. You can walk back up in the presence of God now. You can come back to the house of God now because I have canceled your sin. I'm sorry, I'm happy about that. He said not just the sin before you commit, you gave your life to him, but the sin you committed last night. He said, I've forgiven you of that already. The sin in your mind when you thought that bad thing. I canceled it already. That bad attitude. I canceled it already. He said, if any man be in Christ. a new creature not with Christ not beside Christ not behind Christ but he said you got to get in me <laughs> y'all looking at me crazy huh you got to get in me remember John said that in the 17th chapter he says father I hope today I want them to be like us I'm in you you're in me I want them to be in me like I'm in you, that when they see them, they see me, that when they come around them, the, uh, oh God, the anointing is so strong that they get slain in the spirit just by me walking by them. Doesn't that free you up? That means you can do a supernatural thing in a natural world. They're asking you, how'd you get that business? I don't know. I was just in Christ and it happened. Who am I talking to? Give me a high five in the spirit. How'd you get out of that situation? I just don't know. I was in Christ. When you're in Christ, you are a new creature. The world don't see you anymore. They see Christ. Let me, let me. Let me. Come here, Tanise. Come here. They don't understand this. Denise is an account executive. I don't know if she is or not, but we're going to call her an account executive. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm in Christ. Christ is in Denise. Denise is walking into the bank. All right. They see her coming and recognize who she is. They ain't got to see me. Tell them what you want. When she opens her mouth... Things are released to me because she's got a good reputation. Jesus has the best reputation, so I'm in Christ. Because they won't give it to me because of my reputation. And they won't even want to see me because of my reputation. But because I'm in Christ Jesus, when he walks in, they'll say, I don't know why I'm doing this. But I'm going to sign the paper. If any man thank you, be in Christ. why we got to get in Christ. It takes the pressure of us off of us working for this thing so badly. We got to participate, but it's not up to us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Within the next seven days, can I just say that, and I'm not a seven day, 14, 21 day, but then the next seven day, there's going to be favor open to you. like never before. 
for those who are in Christ, he says, I'm opening a door for you that was once closed. Because I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, the favor of God. Oh my God. Oh my God. By Friday, by Friday, by Friday, by Friday, there's going to be a demonstration of this message. If you receive that, you got to get in a position to receive it. There it goes. There it is. There it is. I don't know who needs this by Friday, but there's going to be a demonstration by Friday of the favor of God that was released to you through the resurrected Christ this day. Mm. Yeah, I hear the Lord. They're looking at your paperwork now. They're looking at your paperwork now. <laughs> I don't know who that's for, but they're looking at your paperwork now. And by Friday, and by Friday, there shall be a supernatural release of favor upon you. You receive that? Say hallelujah. Can I get three people who need that to stand right where with me? Stand right here to stand where, where? Yeah, come right, come right here. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. Right here, right here. Oh, I'm in the right place. I need you to repeat after me. Be it done unto me. Be it done unto me. According to your will. Say it again. Be it done unto me. Be it done unto me. According to your will. According to your will. One more time. Be it done unto me. Be it done unto me. According to your will. According to your will. I release it. I release into it. your life in Jesus' name. Receive it. 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 Accelerate it, God, to Friday. Accelerate it to Friday. Accelerate it to Friday. Let there be demonstration today, God, of your power, of your favor, of your supernatural on their lives. We're not moving by the human form. We're moving by the spirit now, God. Let it be accelerated in the spirit realm. Move it from the heavens and let it be manifested in the earth realm. Give God glory while you're up here. You gotta. Get out of the natural and go into the spirit with this thing. This is a spiritual thing that's happening. Give God glory in the spirit realm. Give God power in the spirit realm. Touch and agree with him in the spirit realm. By Friday, somebody's child is going to call them that you have not heard from. By Friday, by Friday, there's a release in this hour. Hallelujah. I speak it, I declare it, I claim it, I demand it in Jesus' name. Ooh. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, receive it and walk in it. Walk in it. 
Walk in it. Don't just say it, but walk in it. Walk in it. God is asking you to step out. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Don't wait for him to do it. He says, I'm waiting for you to take that step. Give God glory as you return to your seat. Hallelujah.